welcome back to another video. So look what I have sitting here in front of me. <laughs> Y'all, today has been the best day ever. I never ever thought in a million years that I would be sitting here with the 150 set of Holbein colored pencils. An absolutely wonderful subscriber sent these to me and it was so generous of her to do so. She had very kindly asked me not to mention any names or say who she is. She said that she just wanted to be able to bring me a little bit of joy because she's been in my shoes before. Those of you that have been watching my videos for quite some time, you probably know what I'm talking about, but I'm not gonna get into that in this video because this is going to be a unboxing and review, and I'm sorta of gonna share my first impressions. I'm most likely going to swatch all of these out. I don't know yet if I'm gonna do that in this video, but we will see where this video takes us. I want to be able to play with these a little bit before I really share my thoughts on these. I've heard mixed things about these pencils, which is kind of crazy because these have been a dream set for me for the longest time. I honestly never thought I would have these. And I am just so grateful, y'all. When I opened that box, I literally had tears in my eyes. I started screaming. <laughs> My family thought something was wrong with me because I was just so excited and I could not believe what was inside the box that came from Blick. <laughs> so I really wanted to be able to share these with you and share my excitement and my joy that I had today when I received these in the mail. So they did come wrapped in plastic and of course they came from Blick so they were very nicely packaged. And we are going to go ahead and take a really close look at these today. I love the box, it's just gorgeous. And I don't think this is the same box that I've seen. I think maybe that the box is a little bit different for those of us in the US. So for those of you that don't know, the Holbein pencils were not available to us in the US for the longest time. It's only been, I think, within the last year or so, maybe not even that long, that Blick Art has started to carry them. And so you can purchase them from that website now, but I'm not sure if anybody else carries them for us in the US and I'm not even sure where you could get them if you're in other parts of the world. They used to have them available on Amazon Japan, but I don't even think if you're in the US you can go on there and order them on Amazon Japan anymore. I don't think they're available any longer. But I remember for quite some time, a lot of people in my Facebook group were ordering them from Amazon Japan and getting them for a right around $250. So let's go ahead and take a look at the top of this gorgeous box. So we have the word Holbein written up here in the corner, embossed in this beautiful gold with a gorgeous font. It looks so fancy. <laughs> and then it just says set of 150 pencils, fine, smooth, and vibrant colored pencils made with light, fast pigments. And then of course over here it says Holbein Artist Colored Pencils and then the big 150 over here all embossed in gold. It's beautiful and then they show you here what the pencil looks like. Let's take a look at the back of the box. So we just have all the colors swatched out here. And then over here it just says Holbein Artist Colored Pencils, set of 150 colors. And then it says over here that they're an oil-based pencil and they have a medium hard lead that is 3.8 millimeters in diameter. So I think that is the same size as the Polychromos. And from what I remember, these look very similar to the Polychromos, as well as those pencils I just recently reviewed. The Brute Fooner Pastel set, or the Brute Fooner Macarons, that are supposed to be a dupe of the pastels that come in this Holbein set. So here we get this pamphlet. It says Holbein Artist Colored Pencils. And it's going to have a whole list here of the colors. And then it looks like it's going to give you a list of all the colors as well as give you the number. I'm assuming this is probably the number on the pencil. And then the stars are the light fast rating. And then I believe this is probably going to tell you which colors, if there's a dot in the column here, then that means it is in that set. So we've got the 24 set, the 36 set, the 50 set, and I'm not sure what 50p means, and then 100 and 150. So apparently there's quite a few different sets available. There's also a 12 set over here, but there's a few different ones, so I'm really not sure. This may mean 12 pastel, and then maybe 12 bright or something, and 12 primary, I don't know, it says 12 PR. So I'm really not sure, I'll have to look into that. 
but the whole pamphlet gives you all the information as to where you can find each one of the colors in which set. So that's really neat. And then it has all the colors swatched out and shows you the colors that you get. Then we have another pamphlet here, and this one is another swatch chart here of the colors. And then it's showing you the actual size of the pencil. Of course, we're gonna pull the pencils out and take a look at them. But it does say here that it's an oil-based core and this is what the pencils most likely look like when they come to you. A lot of the colored pencils, when they come to you, they have that flat tip just for protection before you get around to being able to sharpen them. And then it will have a production code right here. It has the finished ends, the color number of the pencil, and then the name, and then this, I'm assuming, is the light fast rating. It says the pencil is seven inches long, 3.8 millimeter core diameter, and then a 7.8 millimeter uh, barrel diameter. So that just gives you all the information about the pencils. And then it comes with this letter here. This is just all about the light fast ratings and then explains what each one of the stars mean. And I'll just hold that here in case you want to pause. You could take a look at that. And then it looks like here there's apparently maybe some pencils that have no star. And we'll see about that as soon as we take a look at the pencils. So we've got no star, one star, two stars, three stars. So three stars would be the highest light fast rating. And then we get a swatch chart here. And maybe we'll go ahead and just swatch these out on this swatch chart that it comes with because this is really cool. You could just fold it up and leave it in here with your pencils. And I don't know that I'm gonna take these out of here. I may take them out of here. I actually just now got a pencil case for my luminance. They were in a case for the longest time and I figured if I put them in a case, it would make me wanna use them more because I've not gotten a lot of time to sit around and use them. But I took them out last night and I plan on using them here very soon. So you get the swatch chart. And this paper has a whole lot of tooth, so it's perfect for swatching your colored pencils out on. So maybe we will use that. So these come really, really nicely packaged. The box is really, really nice, and it's really, really sturdy. So we're gonna go ahead and do the reveal. <laughs> Look how gorgeous those are. Wow. <laughs> okay, so let's take a look at the first tray. And look at this. They come with these ribbons here that you could just lift the tray right out. Oh, this is so nice. They are packaged a lot like the Luminance or the Pablo pencils. Well, let's go ahead and take a look over. I think I'm going to start over here because it looks like we start here with our yellows and that is the order that I would go in. So we start here with our yellows, get into our yellow oranges and then oranges and reds and pinks. And this is in such a good order. This is the order that I would put them in if I was putting them into color family order. Oh my gosh, they're just perfect. Look at this. So our reds, we've got a beautiful bright, bright pink here and some more reds. I don't know. I'd probably swap them around just a little bit. Maybe we have our brighter pinks here as we get into our pinky purples. We've got a brownish red and I don't know, it might be more of a purple red because now we're getting into the purples and then the blues. We've got some lighter blues here. Teal. We've got a couple teal shades here. Oh, I can't wait to see the pastels. Oh my gosh, that's what everybody raves about with this set, and I just cannot wait to get to that tray. So we've got all the teals here, the greens, the lighter greens, and then the even lighter greens, and then our very yellowy fluorescent greens. So let's go ahead and pop this up. And then we get another piece of this, I don't know, is that styrofoam? I don't know what that is, but it's just an extra added piece of protection, which is really, really nice. When I was showing you that pamphlet and I said one of them meant possibly primary and then one was bright and one was pastel, if you look at these, you could tell that they are much more muted tones. We've got our browns here and we've got some brighter colors here, but they're also pretty muted. And if you compare it to this tray, this tray, they are very bright and vibrant, and you could see the difference in the two of them. Let me see how much I could get in the viewfinder here. I think I have my camera viewfinder zoomed out as much as I possibly can, so hopefully y'all can see that. But you could see that there are some bright colors in here, but a lot of the tones are much more muted, and these do look a little bit more bright and vibrant. 
Okay, so over here we have our greens, a little bit lighter greens, all of your greens, and then our sort of like olive yellow type colors. And then we have our colors that are more like a mustard yellow. And then we get into some orange tones here. This one looks to be a little bit rosy orangey. I don't know. I can't wait to swatch these and see what some of the colors are. And then we get into some browns, some darker browns. So this is gray. These are all grays. It looks like we have some warm grays and some cool grays. These look like the warmer grays here. And then these, the cooler grays here. And then it looks like we have two blacks. So let's see what this is about. One is called black and the other one is called lamp black. And it looks like one is a lot more gray. It looks like one is like a very dark gray. I don't know if you could tell by looking at the tip there, but it looks like one is a very dark gray and one is your regular black, black color. And then it looks like we have two whites here. We've got this little tag on here with a little warning sign. Oh, telling me that it could cause cancer. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> Oh goodness. Okay, so I wonder why that's only on the white pencil. It's like a little cancer warning. I thought they only do that in the state of California. Okay, so this is our white pencil, and then this one here is our soft white pencil. So we have two different whites, and then this one here must be the soft white that artists rave about. That is so, so wonderful because on this one it actually says use a knife to sharpen it. Okay, so that little cancer warning sign is only on the two white colors. I wonder why it's only on the white colors. If you know, you'll have to let me know in the comments below. But you could see right here it says use a knife to sharpen. So it must be really super, super soft. But I have heard that this white is so amazing, better than even the Caran d'Ache white, and it will literally go over any other color. And I wanna be able to try that out and see. But then down here, we get some really cool looking metallic colors. We don't just get a gold, but it looks like we get a bronze, we get a copper. And what are these other ones? Let me see what this is here. So that is a bronze. And then this one here says pale gold. And then this one, says antique silver so we get an antique silver and then it looks like we get a true silver so we get a silver an antique silver and then the bronze and the pale gold and then this one is our true so we get a pale gold and then we get one that is much golder and then we get a copper here so let's go ahead and look at the next tray and oh my gosh y'all get ready because <laughs> this is the real deal here <laughs> This is what everybody raves about in this pencil set. So let's go ahead and do the reveal again. Oh, look at those colors. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, look at these teals. That's what I was looking for. Oh, they're so beautiful. And then you get some neons down here. And I think from what I have heard that the neons are the ones that don't have a light fast rating on them. Let me see here. So here is one of the neon colors, and then let me pull out one of these pastel colors, and I'll hold them right next to one another. And yeah, that just as I thought, I thought that I had heard somebody say, or saw somebody talking about it in one of the Facebook groups or something, that the neon ones don't have a light fast rating. So this one is a neon color. You can see that there's no stars on it. And then this really pretty willow green, it's got two stars. So I think that was moderately light fast is what I read earlier in the pamphlet. But look how gorgeous these are. We start with over here with the yellows, very pale, beautiful yellows. We have a yellowy orange color, a couple of those. Then we get into our peachy tones and some pinks, some brighter pinks, and then some more muted pinks here, pastel but still muted. Then we have this beautiful lavender color and a purple and then we have a purpley blue then we get into our blues look at that gorgeous light blue oh my gosh you all know i am always always looking for light blues look how beautiful that is i'm surprised we don't have more of the light blue shades in this set though 
Yeah, I just checked the other tray and we don't have any other light blue. So all the light colors or the colors that you can use as your highlight colors, those would all be in this tray. And that I would assume that this set would make it very, very easy to put together color combinations because you can go to one tray and pick a dark color, then go to the other tray, pick from the brighter colors one of your mid-tones, and then go to this tray and pick one of your highlight colors. Okay, so we've got our blues and then our greens, and look at this gorgeous color, oh my goodness. Then we have a lot of colors here that could be used for uh, lighter skin tones, like ivory, and I think this one is called sand. And then we've got some colors down here that are more peachy. So these down here are definitely more peachy and these down here have a lot more pink in them. I would assume either of those you could use for lighter skin tones. And then we've got all these beige sort of colors. Some of them have a little bit of pink in them and they're just all different sorts of shades of pink. Here's a very beautiful pale, pale blush pink that's gorgeous. And then we have another purple that is muted but pastel at the same time. Look at that gorgeous purple. And then we have another blue and then we've got a blue green here, sort of. And then these colors are gorgeous. Oh my gosh, look at these. Look at this beautiful like blue green color as we come into the greens. And then we've got some more greens here. And then we've got our neon colors. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a closer look at these pencils. They have the colored barrels and then they have the beautiful gold writing. And we've got the gold rings here. And then we have the covered tips so that you cannot see the core. And this is what the lead looks like when it comes to you. Like I said earlier, it is a little bit flatter on the edge, if you could see that. And that is just for protection, of course. I would recommend whenever you get a new colored pencil set, you always sharpen them. And you all know me, I like to color with very sharp tips on my pencils. But it says Holbein Works LTD right here. And then it has the Light Fast rating right here. So this one has three stars. The name of this color is Emerald Green. And so the name is right here, then the gold ring. And then it says OP. 235 so it's got the number at the top so they do have numbers and names and like I said earlier the core is 3.8 millimeters and I think it said the barrel was seven millimeters if I'm remembering correctly I did say it at the beginning of the video when I was going through the pamphlet so you can skip back to that timestamp and be able to see if you're curious how big the barrels are. But I grabbed a polychromos and I wanted to show you how similar they are to a polychromos. And I think that they're probably the same size. They both have the color name and then they both have the light fast rating and then they both have the color number. On the Holbein, you're gonna get the color number above the gold ring. On the Polychromos, you're gonna get the number and the light fast rating below the gold ring. And on the other side of the Polychromos, you get a UPC code, which you don't see. On the Holbein, and then when you turn the Holbein around, it just says Holbein Artist Colored Pencils, and then it'll say Japan up here. And if I turn the Polychromos around, it says Polychromos Made in Germany, and then Faber-Castell. So they're very, very similar and I wanted to grab these colors because I wanted to show you, you know, the same color in each set so you could see how comparable they are. For those of you that saw my video where I did a review on the Brute Fooner Macaron pencils, I went and grabbed a Brute Fooner Macaron pencil and look at this, you cannot even tell the difference. Now, when I filmed that video and did a review on those, I did not own the Holbeins. I did that prior to receiving these. And like I said, I never thought that I would have a set of Holbeins. I honestly did not. But look how much these look the same. Like they are pretty much identical down to the color name. And I'll turn it over so you can see this side. And it looks a little bit different and the color name is in a little bit of a different place. But the gold ring, it almost exactly matches up. And look at the numbers. One is OP274, the Holbein, and the other one is B for Brute Fooner, and then 1274. <laughs> so we've got the 274 on the Holbein, 
and then they just put a one in front of it and made it one two seven four on the brute food or macaron pencil so if you cannot afford to go out and purchase a set of whole binds. The Brute Food or Macaron pencils are pretty much supposed to be a complete dupe for this set. I could also do another video and we could do a complete comparison from this set to that set. That would be really interesting to know which of those colors actually match up exactly to these colors that are in the whole bind set. Let's go ahead and talk about pricing and availability. These came to me from Blick Art. So you can purchase these on dickblick.com and I will have a link down in the description box below so you can easily find them. These are available in many different sets. You can get them in this 150 set just like this and these are $474.75 and that's the price as of right now March 9th 2022. So they're $474.75 but if you can't afford to get the entire set of 150 you can start with just a pack of 12. I always recommend when it comes to artist grade pencils. I always recommend getting a much smaller set, trying them out. If you don't like anything, like with Blick or even Amazon, if you don't like something, you can always send it back. If you're really, really disappointed in something and you really don't think you can make it work and you're really, really just don't like it, then don't waste your money. Do send it back. But I also recommend before you send it back, like with colored pencils, you need to try them on many different papers in many different books because you really need to match your pencils with your paper or your pencils with a particular paper in a particular book. So when I was a beginner, I would get a colored pencil set. Even when I got my very first budget set, I thought that I didn't like them and I was only trying them in one book. Back then it was just in books. So it was only like in the Amazon books because I really didn't know about all of the other artists out there. I was basically buying like Jade Summer books and Deborah Muller books, but I would try them on the Amazon paper and I would instantly think that I didn't like them. Well, after I had a little bit more experience and I really understood how that worked, I was able to match my paper up with my pencils or my pencils up with my paper or match my pencils to a particular coloring book. And now I just know that whenever I pull out a set of pencils or I buy a new set of pencils, I need to test them in every different book or on every different you know, kind of paper that I have. So that's just a little recommendation for you. Don't always just give up on a pencil set when you get them and you think that you don't like them or they're not working in a certain book for you or blending well. So I would recommend just starting out with a 12 set if you can't afford getting the much bigger set and you can get the 12 set of basic tones, design tones, or pastel tones for $39.49. And then you can get a 24 set of assorted tones for $78.94. You can get a 36 set for $117.69 or a 50 set of basic tones for $157.98 or you can get a 50 set also of just the pastel tones. So you can get the pastel tones or the basic tones for the $157.98 for each one of those and then just pick and choose which ones you want. If you want to start out with 50 pencils, I would recommend just probably grabbing that basic set for $157.98 and then you could always come back and fill in your open stock pencils later or if you really, really like them, you can buy the bigger set and then you can just use that original 50 set that you purchased and you could just fill in where you need to and use that as your secondary set. And then there's a 100 set of assorted colors and that one comes in a tin box as do all of the other ones that I mentioned. The 100 is 315.17. The only one that comes in the cardboard box is this 150 set here. So all of the other ones are gonna come in a tin and these come in this really nice, beautiful cardboard box. And of course, I really can't tell you about the tins because I've not seen those, but knowing the company and seeing how nicely packaged these were, I would assume that the tins are just as nice. And then of course, if you're needing open stock pencils, these are also available in open stock. And the open stock, if you bundle them with six or more, they're $3.13. Now, I'm not sure if you have to get like at least six of all one color, or if you can mix and match the colors. I'm really not sure about that, but it says $3.13 if you purchase six at a time. But of course you can go to their website and you could just look around and browse around. And I'm sure you could probably just um, add some to your cart to be able to figure that out really quickly. If you are just getting a couple pencils and you're not getting six, then they're $3.48 for each open stock pencil. 
Okay, y'all, now we're going to do the sharpener test. And you know, I always do these in all of my video reviews because I want to see how soft or how hard the wood is on the pencils that I'm reviewing. And then I always bring the jar link out because this is my new favorite. This is my electric pencil sharpener option that I've been recommending to all of you when you come to me and you're like, I have pain in my hands and I just can't use the doll because I can't turn the lever and it hurts. And when the company reached out to me and wanted to send this to me, I was actually starting to have issues with my hands and they were hurting. They've stopped now, but it was giving me a really hard time being able to use the doll. So they happened to reach out to me at the perfect time because I was shopping around for an electric pencil sharpener to find the one that I liked. And I was always very, very uh, scared of electric pencil sharpeners, especially on some pencils like this, because you always, I, I don't even know. I don't know if I want to put a whole bind in the jar link. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. I'm probably going to do it just to test this out for y'all because I want to show you that this pencil sharpener does actually auto stop where it's supposed to as long as you leave it on three. And then I like to use the doll because that's the one that's going to tell me how hard or soft the wood is on the pencil. And I would assume that these are probably going to be made out of a much better quality wood than some of the more budget pencils. So let's go ahead and put this in here. You could see that it goes in there very, very nicely and it's not gonna mess up your pencils at all. And this is very, very easy to turn. And let's see if it stops where it is supposed to. Okay, so yeah, it loosened up and it stopped and then I just take the pencil out. And look how beautiful that is. Okay, so in many of my videos, I have mentioned that this takes anywhere from six millimeter barrels to 12 millimeter bar barrels. So this pencil sharpener is gonna work for most all pencils. It works for hexagonal pencils. It's great with my Pablos. It works for square pencils. It's great with my square brute pruners. It works for every single pencil set that I have tried to put in here. Okay, so when you put your pencils in here, it is going to, somebody had asked me in one of my recent pencil reviews, why did it look like the pencil was sticking? And you're gonna find once you stick it in here that it's just securing the pencil. Like it's really not a big deal. It's not, you know, it comes right in and out, but I think there is some kind of rubber or something in there just to hold your pencil in place. And maybe it has to do with the mechanism of the sharpener and the way that it works. I really don't know. So let's go ahead and it is on three. And it stopped right when it was sharpened. And look at that beautiful sharp lead. The darker brown is from the jar link, and then this is the one that was in the doll. And you could see that the jar link definitely does not eat up your pencils. It is the same exact lead that I am getting from the doll 133. Let me see, let me hold these a little bit. Okay, so right here, I'm gonna hold this really close, but I'm trying to hold them really even. It looks like it may be showing a little bit more of the wood in the one that went into the jar link, but I mean, gosh, you could barely, barely tell. Let me turn them a little bit, maybe. Okay, so really that's not true because if I turn that one, they do actually look exactly the same. I think they do. You'll have to let me know what you think in the comments below. But they worked wonderfully in both the doll and the jar link. And the wood in these pencils is very, very soft, and so it's going to be very easy, even if you have pain in your hands, to be able to turn the lever on the doll to sharpen the whole binds. So now it's time to go ahead and swatch out all of these gorgeous colors. <laughs> I am so excited about this part of the video. And normally I would use one of my custom uh, swatch charts that I created, but I don't have one for 150 colors yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the one that it came with. And the colors are laid out on here exactly how they came when they came in the box. And so I really like that order and I think I'm gonna leave them that way. This will probably be the only pencil set that I've ever had that I leave in the order that they are because I just think the order is really, really neat. How it has one layer of muted darker colors, then the middle one is the bright colors and then they have the full tray of pastels. And I would like to see those colors laid out all together. Like I would like to see all of the pastels all in the same place. And this swatch chart that it comes with, if I ever do decide to take these out of the box that they came in, this swatch chart would be really great, I think, to fit right inside the pencil case. 
And so I'll always have my swatch chart right there anytime I need it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this to speed. And after I am done speeding it up and you watch me lay down all the colors on the swatch chart, I'm gonna come back and we're gonna do a review of the colors like we always do. So here's all the colors all laid out on the swatch chart. Look how beautiful these are. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so I just wanted to go ahead and talk about a couple of the things I noticed as I was laying the pencils down onto the swatch chart. So I did leave all the little crumbs like I have in previous videos to show you that a couple of the colors did break and I could tell by looking at this, it was mostly greens and a blue and then it looks like one red and a pink. But most of them were the greens. I see like four different shades of green laying there that broke when I tried to do the hard pressure because when I'm doing my swatch charts and I'm laying out the colors, I like to do a gradient if you notice of darker and then a little bit lighter and I come up on the lead of the pencil as I go down and I just leave the bottom part the lightest. I like to be able to look at my swatch charts and see the different values of color that I can get from each individual pencil. When I was laying some of these down, I did notice, I will say that the metallics here the metallics, some of them were much softer than others. The antique silver, it went down a little bit weird feeling. I don't even know really how to describe it, but it was, it felt like a harder pencil, but all the rest of them, when I laid them down, they really seemed like they were a lot softer than the antique silver. Now the regular silver felt 
like it went down very, very nicely and it was very creamy. And the majority of all of these pencils are super, super creamy. And I think it was the Prussian blue up here when I laid that one down. That one felt a little bit weird and it was a little bit surprising because that particular pencil was, I don't even want to say scratchy, but it felt too very different when I laid it down. And I may have forgotten to sharpen those because before I did this and swatched all these colors out, I went through and I tried to sharpen all of them. But I have 150 pencils here and it took me quite a while to go ahead and go through them and sharpen them all because I really wanted to not just swatch these, but I actually started coloring with them. But I did film myself after I colored most of the coloring page, I filmed myself coloring the skin so y'all could see how that comes together and how the colors blend really well with one another. But I will also tell you that when I was working on that coloring page, I was using the Tone Tan Paper by Strathmore, and these pencils work so beautifully on that paper. Let's go ahead and go over the colors, and these colors are laid out on the swatch chart just as they come in the box. So let's go ahead and start up here. So we've got our yellows. We've got a lemon, which is a beautiful bright yellow, a canary orange. We get into our yellows that have more orange in them as we get into our shades of orange up here. Then we're gonna start getting into our oranges that have more red in them. And we do get a few reds here. There are no other reds on the rest of the swatch chart. And then we get this color here that's beautiful called Carnation and Strawberry. So we're getting more into our colors that have a lot more pink into them or lean more towards that side. And then we have this crimson here. We have this wine red here that is a dark brownish red tone. Bordix, I don't know if I'm saying that right, Bordix red. That's a really pretty shade of red. So we get some reds, but a lot of them are more on the pink side or they have more brown in them. Or like this one here, this carnation color, this looks more towards like a pink, I guess, kind of like a pinky, orangey, reddish type color. It's really, really pretty. And then we're gonna get down here and we've got some more colors that are pinks, but they're like purpley pinks. And then here we have amethyst, which is a very deep purpley pink. Here we have burgundy. So I would consider that a red shade, but it does have a lot of brown in it. <laughs> so it's very, very dark raisin, which is a very dark, deep, deep purple. It almost looks like it has a lot of blue in it too. It's a very different color. Then we have this purple here. We've got a couple more purples. This one is called grape. It looks like a very deep bluish purple. A couple more purples here. So we do get quite a few purples. One, two, three, four, five, so like five purples, and there's gonna be some more purples down here on the bottom of the swatch. Once we get down to the pastel colors, you're gonna get a couple more purples down here. This small blue here does still also have a lot of purple in it, but you could see up here we get quite a few blues, and then we get our turquoise colors, and if you look down here, you get quite a few more blues as well. And you even get some more turquoise shades that are much more pale. And then here we get into our greens. We've got a gorgeous peacock green here as we come into our more grassy type green colors. Here we have a holly green, which is gorgeous. And then if we look down here at the bottom by the pastel colors, we get a lot more greens down here, a brighter green, we get this color called cobalt green, which is a gorgeous green, and then a jade green. We have some more shades of green down here that are olivier type greens. And we get a couple greens over here as well. And a very bright green over here in our neon colors. But look at these shades of neon colors. Are these just beautiful? And these went down super, super soft, and they're so bright and vibrant. I am loving this orange. The orange and the pink, those are just gorgeous. And this one looks like more of a fuchsia neon pink. That's really pretty. It's called Luminous Rose, but that is just gorgeous. So back up to the top, you could see that we do get plenty of greens. If you're looking at the greens, you could see all these greens we get up here. And then we get all these shades of green again down at the bottom. And then we actually have a few olive tones here. So this one is called Olive Drab, Olive Yellow, 
and olive brown, and then we have a mustard here. So to me, that would count as another yellow, another shade of yellow. But we get a mustard and a khaki, and we get a few browns here. And then as we come down here, we have even more browns. So we've got lots of different shades of browns all in here. We've got some browns that have yellow, some browns that have orange, some browns here that have red. I would count even this mahogany more as a red color. So we do get quite a few reds. And I know a lot of sets are usually lacking when it comes to reds. And then here we get all of our grays. We get some warm grays and some cool grays. We get two blacks, and you could see the difference for sure in both of these blacks. One is a warmer black, and this one here, the lamp black, is more of a cooler black. And then we have two different whites here, and just laying these whites down on top of this white swatch chart, I could totally see them. And this soft white, this shows up so much. But I really wonder how that shows up on black, but that's a gorgeous white. And this is the one that everybody just totally raves about. And of course, I didn't sharpen this one yet because it has that little warning on the pencil that tells you to only sharpen with a knife. So I will sharpen that as soon as I get around to it. But I swatched that before I ever sharpened it and it went down beautifully. So soft and creamy. Then we have our silver, antique silver. So we've got quite a few metallics, a couple of silvers, a bronze and two different golds. These are two different shades of gold and then a copper and they're all really beautiful. And then this section down here, this is all of our pastels and it looks like most of the pink shades we have. Of course, we had a couple at the top like I showed you a little bit ago. So we do have a couple pinks here, but then when you come down here, look at all these gorgeous shades of pink you get. And then we got still a couple purples. We get all these blues and then I already talked about all of the greens we get. But there are some gorgeous shades here. Even if you look down here, we have even more pinks. So look at these different pinks down here that are very different. This color right here, this ash rose, this is absolutely beautiful. And I did notice that a lot of these colors are just the same as the other set I just reviewed. So that whole pastel set, the Brute Fooner uh, Macaron pencils, those are a complete and total dupe for these pencils. If you want me to do a video where I compare those side by side, the Holbein pastels to those Brute Fooner macarons, I would like to lay them down side by side or even compare the swatch charts and see if one is more pigmented, if the colors are exactly the same. And I would love to do that and make that a whole entire video. So if you wanna see that, let me know in the comments below. But overall, we get some gorgeous colors in this set. And I love how the trays are all laid out. And I love how the swatch chart is laid out. Even though I am someone who loves to have everything in perfect color family order, I decided to lay them out on this swatch chart because I want them laid out by trays. And I don't think I'm going to be rearranging these. I really feel like this set would be really great to go to one of the trays and pick a darker tone like this tray here. This is all one tray. This is one tray. And then this is the tray of pastels. But I feel like it would be really cool if you went from tray to tray and you can use this tray or even some of these colors over here and pick a darkest tone and then come back and pick a mid-tone from one of these two trays, whether you wanted to go more muted or brighter. And then you could come down here and have this whole section of that whole one tray and pick your highlight color. And this would be really, really great for beginner. I know it's really expensive, but it would give you the ability and make it easier to be able to put some colors together. I hear that it's like one of the biggest things I hear in my Facebook group all the time is beginners struggling to put colors together. And I've seen it in a lot of the coloring classes, the private coloring classes that I'm teaching as well. A lot of my subscribers that are coming to my classes, they really struggle to put colors together and we really focus on sometimes the first whole class just learning how to match up colors and put together color combinations before bringing them to your coloring books. So overall, this is a really nice layout of colors and they give us just enough grays to be able to do the shadow hacks and such. If you've not seen that video where I've done that, I'll link that in the upper right hand corner. But I use my grays not just to use on fur and things like that. I use them to be able to create 
darker shadows on my darker colors when I'm putting colors together or I want to create more of a drastic shadow on any object on my coloring pages. So this will probably be the first time in a very long time that I am not doing a blend test and one of my first impressions or review video on a colored pencil set. And that is because you can see that a lot of pencils are missing. And that is because I have been working on a coloring page. And so I really wanted to test out these pencils. When I received them in the mail, I was just so overwhelmed and excited and still sort of in shock. <laughs> I don't know if you could probably hear that in my voice in the beginning of the video, but I literally filmed the video and then I was in such shock it was hard for me to like even uh, get my words together to be able to do the video. <laughs> and so I had to refilm parts of it in the beginning of the video so that I wouldn't sound like I was all over the place. But I am in love with these pencils and I have spent a lot of time coloring with them. For the first time in quite a while, I actually sat down and I colored with these pencils and I have a whole completed coloring page. I am going to have that video next after this one. So if you would like to see that video and see me coloring, it's going to be a speed through because I really wanted to just be alone and spend my time with these pencils and enjoy coloring because most of you know I don't get to do that too often. Life is very, very busy. And a lot of time when I am coloring, I am doing a tutorial or doing something for my channel. So I wanted to be able to just take that time and color. And I colored part of the page and then I realized, oh my gosh, I really just want to film this myself and maybe I can just film and just be quiet and listen to music in the background. So that's what I did. I will be bringing you a video of me coloring a beautiful portrait. I'm not going to tell you yet what it is, <laughs> but I will be bringing you a video and that will be next to follow this one. The other thing I wanted to do with these pencils is I wanted to take out the Brute Fooner Macaron and I wanted to put the pastels side by side and see how they're the same, how they're different, and really do a comparison of both of these pastel sets. So if you would like to see that, let me know in the comments below. Everything you've seen in this video, as always, will be down in the description box below. And I hope you all have a wonderful day. Happy coloring. Bye.